Hey Team Coffee Roasters, Brian here. This week we installed a new six kilo machine in our roastery and we had to take it through the seasoning roast process. This means roasting a lot of coffee, very dark, very oily, and doing it five times to make sure that our drum is scrubbed out of any old machine gunk and it's ready to start roasting coffee for consumption. If you bought a Mill City Roaster or are thinking about buying a Mill City Roaster, we offer a complimentary video call where we hop on and we do that first roast with you to make sure that you're set up for success and ready to do the next four batches after our call. In this pre-recorded video, we're gonna be going through and talking about a lot of our settings, um, temperatures, lots of numbers are gonna be thrown out. These are all relative to our machine and our setup. Numbers may vary across from machine size to machine size and other installations as well. If you're having trouble dialing in your settings, make sure to give us a call. Um, we're always happy to hop on and help out with that. But without further ado, let's get into it, start seasoning some coffee, and watch those oils run. Cheers and happy roasting. So we got our beans already weighed out down here. I'm gonna get them in the hopper so I can kind of get settled in and we can kind of step back and be like, all right, we got all of our settings, we're ready to charge. Again, past crop beans, they don't have a lot of life to give for you know maybe something that's gonna be on our menu for wholesale or that we wanna drink by the cup. So they are perfect for seasoning roasts. Um, they still have another life to give um, by getting some oils and kind of getting our drum ready um, for coffee that we're gonna roast for consumption. A note on coffee for consumption is that we, don't, we are not drinking these beans. Uh, all those oils we're scrubbing, they might just be on the beans once they get out, and we don't want to drink that. Um, <laughs> just trash them, they're garbage. So normally when we're doing production, right, we're trying to get these beans in out once they're in the hopper to the drum as fast as possible. But again, we're seasoning, we're just burning up these beans, they're not that precious to us. So I'm making sure that I'm kind of good to go on my settings here. Um, I'm at about 70% for my gas pressure, I'm at my low airflow. And I'm gonna charge at about 450, like a temperature that was similar to my six kilo before we got the new one. So that's just kind of what we're gonna roll with. We also have our pen and notebook. Uh, we're gonna make sure to take good notes, which would be calculating ROR every 30 seconds or minute. I like to do 30 seconds on seasoning roast because it make, helps me keep a closer eye on what's changing and what's doing what. We're also gonna mark when our landmarks happen. So when we hit dry end or that green to yellow transition, when we hit first crack, when we hit second crack, and these are gonna be great notes. It's kind of like your captain's log of roasting to kind of give you an idea. It's like, okay, I hit all these landmarks, but maybe that was too fast from what I know about roasting. So if I wanna slow it down and this was too fast, then I just decrease that gas pressure a little bit. Simple. So great, great, great to have good notes after this. So I'm gonna let these burners Kind of come back on, heat back up, and we're going to charge the roaster on the downtrend just to kind of get in like a nice habit of, you know, natural progression of roasting is that you'll decrease in temperature once you add. So much like our roast alongs, we're just going to kind of go with that natural flow. So burners are off. We've hit our temp. 455. We're declining. I'm going to charge at 450. And away we go. The grandmother's house, here we go. For biscuits and scones and more. Maybe tea and coffee. All right, so we're just gonna track along with this and we're gonna see when we hit our turning point. And that turning point, right, is that kind of pancake where these room temperature beans and your hot drum kind of smoosh together and start increasing in temperature alongside one another. So that's where we start seeing that positive rate of change in the temperature of the bean and we can start tracking, okay, we're moving at eight degrees in 30 seconds, 20 degrees in 30 seconds. And then that'll start to inform us, are we moving a little too quickly? Do we need to decrease gas? We wanna make sure this roast is kind of under control. It's not going off the rails. And that's kind of one thing when I'm doing the calls, I like to kind of like drive these roasts like a profile so you're not left hanging when we're, we get off our Zoom call. But also figure out what the limits are on the machine, how fast, how slow things are going. You know, find out all the details. 
So we're starting to slow down and our temperature decreasing. We're coming up on a minute and a half. And we just hit our turning point. So about 135 with turning point. So I just recorded 216 at 130. When I get to two minutes, I'm just gonna see what the temp is there. I most, when I'm tracking this, I'm more so interested in what is that temperature after turning point? Because that is telling me that positive change and how fast I'm gonna be moving. Two minutes, we're at 2.30. At about three to three and a half minutes, we're gonna see that peak ROR, kind of like the fastest that we're moving, and then it's gonna start to decline. We're coming up on 2.30. And that is gonna be 251. All right, that was 21 degrees and 30 seconds. So on the next 30 second marker, I'm gonna see, are we still moving at 21 or are we moving a little faster? Waiting until I hit that peak. Coffee's still very green. Not a lot of color change happening quite yet. Three minutes, we're at 273. So that was 22 degrees. So just an extra like one degree in 30 seconds. So what I gathered from that is that we're kind of cresting, right? 21, 22, we didn't go up very much in 30 seconds. So I think we're kind of just like reaching that peak and we're gonna start to decrease, which at 3.30, we'll confirm that. 2.94 at 3.30, back down to 21 in 30 seconds. Yes, perfect. Starting to see a little bit of pale yellow in there. Still some green. Nothing quite yet. Four minutes, we're gonna be at 314. That was 20 degrees in 30 seconds. Cool. And now I'm looking for the transition. I'm looking for that kind of like grassy hay smell to a baked bread or cooked pasta kind of like transition. A little bit more like carbohydrates. And I think 4.30 at 3.30 was about there. Starting to get some more of that like toastiness. So 4.30 at 3.30, that was 16 degrees in 30 seconds. I haven't done anything to gas. I'm still sitting at about my 70%. I am gonna increase air a little bit though, just to help move some chaff out of the machine. So I went from my low to my medium. 3.46 at five. Starting to get a little bit of that tan coloring going on right now. I'm gonna increase, uh, decrease gas by about 20% here. From five to 5.30, uh, we moved at 13 degrees in 30 seconds. Now we're kind of sitting in about a solid tan. They're starting to get a little bit of a darker hue going on. Six, 371 at six. That was 12 degrees in 30 seconds.
at 630. We're at 383. That's another 12 degrees in 30 seconds. So kind of starting to level out here. up on seven. Three ninety three. Perfect. Love, love, love. Moving at a good pace. Wanna make sure we're not like kind of stunting our roast like in like the speed that we're or the momentum that we have going into first crack. Um, we want to make sure that we can get up the second crack with enough momentum so that when we shut off the burners, these beans continue to increase in temperature and tumble in the drum a bit. So that they can get nice and dark and get nice and oily. So that's just about nine degrees from seven minutes to seven and a half. We'll slow down just slightly. So we may be getting closer to that roll in first here. Eight at 410. That's eight degrees and 30. Just heard one outlier in there. I'm increasing air just to high, just to help move a little bit more smoke and more chaff out. getting in the first crack here at eight and a half minutes. So it was 10 degrees in 30 seconds from eight to 8.30. So a little bit of momentum there that picked up. So I'm sitting at about 50% of my max gas right now. Good. Nine minutes at 4.27. From the color of the beans, temperature-wise, I'm just gonna make a note that this looks like my, almost like a light roast, or crossing in to like the medium end of a light roast. At about like, for me on this machine, like about 432 degrees. So that can be a really helpful tool as well. If you still have some coffee left over from your old roaster or from a roaster that you really like and like, man, I really dig this coffee, you can color match to kind of decide like where are the numbers temperature wise giving me the same kind of like color value for roast level. That can really help out as you're kind of working towards dialing in your machine. About seven degrees and 30 seconds right now. Beautiful. Ten and a half. It's going to be 400 and 47 degrees. So consistently moving at about seven every 30 seconds. Getting closer to that second crack marker. Beans are starting to smooth up nicely. A light sheen, but not shiny, not oily yet. Second crack is starting to break down that uh, the structure of the bean itself, so all those like those vegetable oils can just like seep to the surface. All right, 456. That was nine degrees in 30 seconds at 11. That tells me you're picking up picking up speed a bit. Just about to kind of get into our rolling second almost. 
starting to hear bits of it now. All right, 465, my limit temp cut off. I'm in second crack now. I'm gonna hit my ignition button so when it decreases in temp, the burners don't come back on. I've applied all the heat that I want and that I need, and now I'm just gonna let second crack and all the energy that's left over in the drum kind of carry itself to a higher temperature to pull oils out of that seed. 12, we're at 473. Beautiful. All right, so second crack is just bustling in there. We're still increasing in temperature. At 12.30, we are at 478. That was five degrees in 30 seconds. down from the 10 degrees in 30 seconds it was before. So we're slowing down. According to my environmental readings, I don't have as much energy being pulled into the system. So that tells me we're about to kind of like halt in the roast and start cooling down very dramatically. 13, 479, which is only one degree in 30 seconds. And just to get more and more smoky with more of that satin sheet kind of shine, but not full on oils. We just decreased the degree from that highest limit, that highest temperature of 479. So we decreased one degree in 30 seconds here. And kind of while I'm in this stage, I don't see any smoke from the cooling tray. I don't see any smoke from the venting, um, which tells me that's all nice and healthy, that we have air moving through and out of our exhaust very fluidly. I'm always a nice thing to see. Oh yeah, and now these guys are starting to get a little slick. So 14 minutes at 475. And now I'm just gonna let start letting these beans, yeah. So now we're gonna let these tumble for five minutes from the time of seeing oils. So 14 minutes, and at 19 minutes is when I'm gonna dump this batch out. These are all numbers during the seasoning roast call that we're going to learn on your setup. Every setup, every machine, everybody's airflow and gas is a little bit different. So we kind of calibrate and dial in specifically to your machine. So numbers aren't exact. We'll be working with new numbers. You might find second cracks a little bit lower than where second crack hit for me. But it's important to know that that's a lot of this unknown, right? We're stepping up, we're kind of calibrating to how things are reading, what is the tool telling us, and working and planning accordingly. Beans at this point are getting so light that I hear a few of them getting sucked out through the venting. So I'm just going to go ahead and just drop my airflow a peg and see if, see if I stop beans getting flung out there. Cool. So we'll let these tumble for five minutes and uh, we'll check back in. All right, so we're coming up on our five minute marker. I'm gonna go ahead, get those beans out of the drum. If you're on a manual machine, make sure to hit your cooling arms and your fan. Digital, just open up that door. Nothing to it. At this point, you want to make sure uh, that all the beans are out of the drum when you dump them out. And if you're going to continue seasoning, make sure to turn that ignition back on. Don't let your drum get too cool, otherwise you have to wait a while for it to heat back up. Cool. 
So go ahead, let these get cooled down. One thing that you can do after the seasoning is you can inspect underneath your drum. Did any beans fall through at all? Are there any, well, whole dark beans, whole green beans? If, if there's whole green beans underneath your drum, uh, we may need to work, work with you and kind of dial in a drum gap. Um, if there's just darker, huge beans from maybe the end of the roast, that's probably just from, you know, having the heat be off and that drum gap widening because there's not as much heat in there. And remember, everything here is relative, so we got to dial into your system um, and get you set off on the right path. So until next time, happy seasoning.